42 has the same weight as 32. What do you mean? I've been 180 pounds since I was 32 years old. <clears throat> and, that, and you're trying to get down to what? 180 pounds. 187 pounds out. I'm recording, so go ahead and get up by the... Uh, <laughs> All right, here we go. Yeah, get up by the thing. Uh, welcome to the Real, Real Guy Podcast today. Uh, welcome to the Lunker Dogs Real Guy Show. I have a uh, guest in tonight, um, Captain David McKenzie. Been a captain longer than pretty much most people that I know. And um, Captain Dave, thanks for, uh, thanks for coming in and joining the Real Guy Podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me. Dave, what I'd like you to do first is you know, introduce yourself... And then um, explain to the audience exactly um, what your job is and what you do because it's kind of neat and it's hard to explain. And um, I don't know, it's, uh, it's a wild job. It is kind of crazy. Uh, Captain David McKenzie, I've been fishing now for, I don't know, 35 years or so. Uh, my current position is um, working in the Star Center in Dania Beach. In the Star Center, basically is a maritime training facility for second and third and open water captains who drive uh, uh, cruise ships think think big you know like tankers yeah tankers cruise ships and so forth um, like so real my my position at the star center is to maintain and make sure that the simulators and classroom simulators operate run Okay. So I do all the IT and visuals, and then I certify the uh, computers to make sure that the ECTUS, which is the electronic charts, the radars, uh, the conning pages and everything are actually working, and the ship is actually going straight when it says it's going straight. Okay. Before we turn it over to the training operation. And, and the simulator, like, that's exactly like driving the real vessel? It is a real deal. We have a uh, hydrodynamicist who's on staff, and um, it is the real deal. It is as close to you get as uh, not being on a ship. The screens are on the largest, it is the largest simulator in North America. Okay. So the screens are 22 foot high, it's a 360 degree. If you look it up online at starcenter.com, star-center.com. Right. Um, there is opportunities for guys coming out of high school to get into our tech program, and um, they can become basically in two years time they can get on a ship and start making a very good living really so the star center is offering that opportunity for most um for the most part though most of the the people who are coming in already have their second or third uh mate license so they're up there they're yeah. they're, they're way up there this is like super advanced training S super advanced right. been, been through a four-year maritime college and then have worked their way up so it, it is a um it, it is a step above what your average um recreational voter would see well, duh. <laughs> well, it is pretty crazy right you know uh, fishing here in uh, government cut you know we just watch the pilots um take these boats in and out just one right after another now there's a lot of pilots the pilots do come in and train. Do they? Okay. Um, from basically all over the world. We also um, provide a, um, a training for new ports that are just getting built. That's our research and development department. So Port Miami, before they dredged Port Miami, they actually came in and on our databases, we made what they were going to do before they started dredging and dynamiting to ensure that they were doing the right thing. And then the port captains would come in and through our different models, they would ensure that the cruise ships or the freighters could come in under all weather conditions. Right. So basically they don't come in at 10 to 15 knots. They come in 35 knots out of the Northeast. And it, if it works then they just say, okay, it works. And, and they're happy with it. But they usually make 10, 12 runs going in, going out with different tides you know different currents, um, different winds, different visibilities, right. to to certify yes, this is going to work. All right. All right. So it's a pretty cool, pretty cool, pretty pretty cool gig. Yeah, and I'm glad you explained it because I wouldn't have done a very good job. Like I know what you do, and I know the people that you're dealing with, but man, that's almost uh, almost like a foreign language. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it's not just talking about you know that type of captain or what those people are doing. 
Um, we're just used to looking at them, you know, going in and out of the port while we're fishing and getting those cool pictures next to those giant vessels and all that. So how long have you been uh, an actual captain? Like, regular captain, you know, like fishing boat captain. I have been an actual captain now for 22 years. 22 years holding a captain's license. Holding a license. Okay. So you renew it every five years. So you've renewed yours four times. Yes. Okay. And would you say you had a pretty good grip on um, the rules and regulations to be um, not a fishing charter, um, but a fishing captain, somebody that runs a fishing boat? Well, yes. A captain's license goes, you don't really have to fish to be a captain. You can, you can run a boat. Right. So, yes, you have to learn the rules and regulations, which change seemingly frequently. And, and you do feel like you have, like, a good grip? Oh, I have a very good grip. Okay. Okay. Well, I just want to, you know, set a little <laughs> precedence here, because some of the conversation we're going to get into a little later is about um, the rules and regulations that um, fishing captains, not necessarily charter captains, but guys that have fishing boats, have to ab abide by, and um, how the rules are enforced and who enforces it and um, why. So um, just wanted to make sure you knew that we have a qualified person in the studio tonight that actually knows, um, he actually knows, I'm trying not to curse here, try, I'm holding myself back, but he actually knows what's going on out there and he actually cares because um, um, he's been fishing in South Florida in Broward and Dade County his whole life and He's seen major changes out there his whole life, and um, I just think it's going to be a great perspective to have an expert captain that actually knows the rules, teaches the rules, explains the rules, and um, keeps up with the rules. So, Dave, that's uh, really yeah, that's really yes. why I wanted you to come in tonight. You not know? not to enjoy the cold beverages and hang out. Well, we're going to do that anyway, All right. like normal. <laughs> You see, Dave's part of the social network, um, shows up to all the events. We also hang out at the Sail Club fishing meeting together when we get a chance. Um, we have kids that are about the same age, and um, we try to squeak in one or two fishing trips a year with one another. Years ago, we used to fish a lot more with one another. I had the uh, offshore boats, and um, I wasn't doing 200 um, trips a year and all that. So, um, you know, we had a lot more time in the old days just to kind of hang out and fish and be you know, normal fishing cabins. But now Dave's got like this serious, like high tech job and um, we just don't get a chance to Jeff, do it that Jeff much anymore. 220 days a year yeah. or more. And I respect that. So when I call him up and he says, I'm off, he's off. Well, you know, I'm changing my business this year. <laughs> I'm changing my business this year. What are you gonna do? Well, I'm either, I think I might start a foundation. <laughs> That's the way to go. <laughs> well, I want to I, I make sure that the people that, you know, I take out fishing understand um, the wildlife and conservation um, that goes along with fishing I, Broward I and Dade County. I think most insured guides, right? Carl Ball and, and the guys down there, they do a good job. They, they try. Jim Hobalis, he does a good job. He'll explain stuff to you down in Flamingo. He'll explain what's going on. No, the, the, but, let, me, let, me, let me take that a bit further. These are the, the best people in the world to spread the message about wildlife and conservation is the guides that you're talking about. Absolutely. Jim Hobalis, Carl Ball, Benny Blanco, uh, Joe Gonzalez, uh, Gavit Tuttle, Ryan Raspberry. I mean, the list goes on. There's yes. probably, you know... I'm only I'm only talking about Broward and Dade County because that's where I fish. Right. And those are the people that I deal with on a daily basis. But there's I would say probably 25 guys that fish inshore that um, are stewards of the environment, and um, by far those people, those guides, are the biggest advocates that we have for wildlife and conservation in Broward and Dade County by far. Correct. Yes. Now, explain to me what you think the role of the Florida Wildlife and Conservation Law Enforcement folks are. They're up against a, a big battle. No, no, no. I want to know what you think <laughs> their responsibilities are. Their responsibility is to try to maintain our environment. Right. We, we did vote on this. and We gave them a bunch of money. They changed their name. Right. Um, 
they're they're basically the eyes and ears that are out there trying to protect our environment from uh, the evils of the poachers and everything else. Poachers, pollution. Pollution, poachers. Netting. Anything that's a law-breaking situation. That's what they're there for. That hurts the environment. Correct. Okay. Now, out of your experience in Broward and Dade County and all the FWC officers that you've been pulled over by, um, do you feel like that's their number one priority? No. And why is that? Uh, I think they are out to see boating safety, which I get. So you think boat safety is their number one priority? I, I think so. Okay. I think they're looking for boat safety first, environment and fish kill second. And then thirdly, they're out there to try to um, help our environment maintain. Okay. I, I've been asked by a lot of people, will the environment ever get better? And I laugh and I'm like, I hope we just can maintain what we have because it's already too late. I hate to agree with you, but the way that the system is set up now, you can have all the rules, you can have all the uh, regulation um, to help save our habitat and wildlife. But unless you focus on those rules and you focus on that problem, are you ever going to be able to make any headway in either maintaining or getting back um, you know, the wildlife that we've lost here in uh, Broward and Dade County? No, there's no way. I mean, you, you need, they need to focus on the, the bigger issue. All right, let me ask you another question. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I wanna, yeah. Do you know anybody that has ever gotten um, a ticket or arrested for having poached or killed an illegal sized fish? Yeah. How many? Uh, there's a few. There's a few out there. Um, they're more like how many? Three, three two, or four, three or four, three or four people. But they're they're primarily more in the Keys than they are in Dayton Broward County. I'm only talking about Dayton Broward no, County. No, there's nobody. You've never met somebody there's in Dayton or Broward County that has gotten a fine or a ticket for having either a poached a fish or no. at, at a season or had one that was too small or too big. Not, or, not in 35 years. Right. Okay. I had one mate that was starting to work for me. Mm-hmm. They got in trouble with a friend of his for poaching a smoke. And at that point, um, he's never worked for me again. Right. Well, but, it's well known that you and I will never, we don't kill fish. I mean, well, it's, it known, happen. it's known in the fishing community. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so that was the only person that I've ever known to actually receive a violation. I've heard about some other dudes getting violations. Well, I've, heard, I've heard about first. the boats on the A dock, and, I've, and, and right. there's, there's been speculation of that. I've heard about that. But, but I haven't witnessed it myself personally. Right. Um, it, whatever made the newspapers, made whatever. Right. The A dock doing whatever they do down there. Right. So, well, there'd be like a major thing but, down yeah, there. But it was like a major thing, and it was like one sailfish. Right. You know, not 500 dead fish laying on a dock. All right, now let me ask you another question. At all the fishermen and captains, do you know? Do you know any of them that have not gotten at least a warning for either a registration, safety equipment, uh, boat equipment? Um, oh, might... at some point you're going to get a ticket. So you will get a ticket. At some point. You will get a ticket. You will get a ticket. I've got a ticket. You've got a ticket. At some point, everybody I've known has had a ticket. Do you know that? Um, for something. I've had a captain license for 20 years, and I was running boats and stuff before that, and I never got a citation until this week. You were on a lucky streak. I don't know if I was on a lucky streak, because I got I got checked, probably. Right, but you had all your documentation, and well, we'll, yeah, go, it was we'll legal. go into this. Right, I was legal. I mean, we'll I, go into what, what you should do, or what you should have uh, on you at all times. And the way you should present it to an FWC officer if he pulls you over. Right. And, and I was legal this week and, you know, but I still received a citation and I received over a half a dozen warnings. 
I also was checked by the FWC uh, seven out of my last ten trips. Right, which I think is ludicrous. I think that's ludicrous also. I think that's, uh, I, I can't understand, and this is where we're trying to go with this whole thing. I can't understand how the FWC can't keep the responsible captains on their eyes and ears on the water. And there's a big push in society as a whole to say, you know, if you see something, say something. Right. Okay, I, that's I the big that. push. That's the big push. Right. So the, the captains that are responsible, not all of them, but some of them, they should have uh, a direct contact with the FWC because they're out there 200, 250 days a year. Right. And if they see something, they should be able to have a median to say something. Right. You know? And then, but, but on the other hand, the FWC should look at these captains in a different different manner. Well, they're, hold on. They're, let, they're ambassadors. Let's, let's, let's just one, one, one subject at a time or one issue at a time. So you feel it's important that the captains that are on the water, especially on the intercoastal and the bay waters, have somebody that they can contact if they see something wrong going on out there. Do you know how the system works now? Now I have been out of touch for a couple couple years, but you, you well, call the one eight hundred. You call one eight hundred number goes on Tallahassee. The, right. You call the one eight hundred number, and then you get a dispatcher. Right. And you may or may not ever see a person while you're there. Right. And you know what I know that probably that violation is done and over with by the time anybody shows up. Correct. I mean, it's <laughs> it's it's, it's, <laughs> it's over. The system is not designed to catch people that are actually poaching or catching fish that are too small or too big or outside the size limits. The system is set up to catch people that have, um, I don't know, a life jacket that um, <laughs> that doesn't have a blinking light. blinking light on it. Or the light doesn't blink on the life jacket it's supposed to blink. All right. And I just think it's like until um, people really have the desire and focus to actually save the environment and save the base and save the intercoastal waterways is it ever going to happen because i'll tell you right now i mean i've watched literally in the last five years probably been out there 20 nights where i'm just watching people poach snook during the summer out of season when they're easy to catch in the inlet oh yeah and i'm just watching them Right. And I don't even, like, think to call the 800 number. No, because you know that by the time you call the 800 number, and by the time you talk to a dispatcher and you explain to them what's going on, that person who's poaching is long gone. I'll tell you about the one time that um, I actually called the FWC because I was watching some uh, people fish in a natural preserve on the New River. You know the one in Shady Banks? Mm -hmm. I think it's called Luke Snyder. What's the name of that one? Snyder Park? No, no, not Snyder Park. The little, um, in Shady Banks. You know, the little park that... Keith. Keith. Bill Keith yeah. Preserve. Keith Preserve. So anyway, um, I'm watching these guys, you know, they're fishing in the sand there, and they're catching these little baby snooks, 10 inches, and they got a five-gallon bucket with like, I don't know, eight or nine of them in there. So I explained to them, you know, listen, you really ought to let those fish go. This is, you know, not too many places do they have up in this river to, you know, lay up in the sand and do whatever the hell they're doing. And um, the people that were catching the fish, they just weren't having it. It didn't go over well. No, it didn't go over well. <laughs> and there was like five of them, and there was just me. Right. I'm, like, getting ready for my trip that day. And um, so I called the 1-800 number, and I explained to the lady what's going on. And... Um, she told me that she did not know that there was a natural preserve on the New River in Fort Lauderdale. Right. Well, it, it's beyond that. It's it's what we're trying to... No, but listen. So then I explained to her where it is. Hey, you know, it's two blocks east of 95. It's right on the New River. There's the only trees on the whole, <laughs> on the whole it's river. It's the only thing left. Right, the only trees on the whole river. It's pretty easy. But if you send a guy out there immediately, at least, you know, these people, you know, get the message on um, you know getting rid of these snooks that they're killing and um, 
I was sat on the phone for a good 10 minutes or so trying to explain to the lady where it was and she had nobody that was uh, in the area or had nobody that um, knew about the area. Right. So it was basically impossible. So well, the 1-800 number was ineffective or crap, however you want to say it. I, I truly believe the FWC is, is undermanned. It's always been undermanned. It's, um, it's well, a budgeting all... thing. There's always been, you know, it's the lowest thing on the list of, of the budgets is, is been the conservation. That, well, they're undermanned, but there's a reason for that. They won't use the leverage that they have. See, one other thing about marine communities, even in, the, even in Dade and Broward County, where it is huge, you know, city style of living, the marine communities are still smaller, like way smaller communities. Correct. It's, 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 but, but it's, listen, the FWC can take advantage of networking in these small communities, knowing everybody or the majority of people in these small communities, and therefore they have an army of people because they have the community that's actually they're working with instead of against. Right. You see, the same people they're giving the safety violations for. You see the FWC coming, and you're like, oh man, I hope they don't come over here today. Correct. And it's always, always when you see the boat, it's like, let me steer a little bit further to the right and let me try and get away from the guy so he won't stop me. Right. Which it, it shouldn't be. Right. You know, it shouldn't be that way. Out of all the times that I've been stops, and I mean literally, and I'm not talking about in the last 20 years, I mean the last five years, we're talking about hundreds of times. Every once in a while, an FWC officer will stop you Look in your coolers and your hatches, you know, for illegal fish. And it takes all of about 45 seconds on my small skiff. Correct. Now, if an FWC officer checked me 100% of the time, and they checked me like that, I would have the utmost respect for the inspection. I would have the utmost respect for the officer. And I'd have the utmost respect for their mission. Which, that's what their mission is, to me, was supposed to be, is to protect the environment. Hey, me, Bruce, get it. Not, not, you know, look for a bad life jacket, or look for something, you know, out of the ordinary. Um, it, it, if, if they would just jump on boats and check coolers, especially for a lot of the guides, you know, life would be a lot better. But we were, we were talking earlier, you know, we were talking the other night, and you said the guy jumped on the boat and didn't know what a mullet was. <laughs> right. I mean, okay, so this guy is the guy that we've empowered to check coolers, boats, for fish, and then he didn't understand that you had a slap full, live wool full of mullet. Right, and, and that same, the same officer, okay, um, that didn't realize, you know, what a mullet was, was also the nicest and most reasonable officer that I spoke with all week. Correct. Now, if I, if I was friends with that officer and he was friends with me, the chances of him knowing what's in the live well would have been moot because he had already known. Right. He's made like, oh, that's Jeff. He's tarpon fishing. He does this well, on a daily basis, and this is what he does, and blah, blah, blah. What, what we need to, to really get in the community is, is more of an open line of communication with the FWC um, and, and have them, you know, I've been a member of the sail club since 1998 or something like that when it started. Right. Not once. Did the FWC show up to, to the fishing club? To the fishing club and have a talk. Well, you know what they do? They show up to the CCA events. Right. And they'll show up to like ICAST and there'll be a booth and there'll be the Florida Wildlife. And you know what happens. But those... that's not the real guys. Well, I know it's not the real guys. I want them to sit down with the real guys. Oh, well, yeah, but hold on. But they're at those events. Correct. Okay. And the fishermen like me, when we see the FWC booth at ICAST or the FWC booth at like, I don't know. I don't know, wherever you see them, you know, they'll be sitting there and it says FWC with a couple officers. <clears throat> or
or you see one at a CCA meeting. So what do you do? Do you talk to them like we're talking? No. Nobody brings up this kind of stuff when they're around. No. Nobody, it's like it's they true. act like when they're at the CCA event that like they're the best buddies of fishermen and anglers. Or they're their advocates. Right. But they're not. No, because everybody's, let me steer right a little bit. Let me get away from this guy so they don't pull me over. You know? Well, I'll tell they you. Don't, they I'll, don't. I'll tell you something very interesting. And I learned a lot this week because I've had to deal with, you know, quite a few issues. Like, you know, if you get steps, if you get stopped seven out of ten times, trust me, you're going to have to deal with some issues. So anyway, I'm dealing with the issues. I'm trying to stay legal. And I learned something this week because one of the times when um, the FWC officer pulled us over, there was two boats fishing at the bridge less than 100 yards away. And there was two other boats using the same channel that we were going down. But the FWC officer went directly to me and pulled me over and asked me for my registration and stuff. And I asked the officer, I said, why did you pull me over? You know, I said, right. the other boats were out here. What, you know, how come me? And he, he was pretty honest with me. He was a nice guy. He was pretty honest with me. He said, well, you had a bunch of fishing rods that I could see. So I asked him then, I said, so if I have fishing rods on my boat that you can see, am I on a higher level of scrutiny? Absolutely. And, and he said, absolutely. Absolutely. That totally floored me. Absolutely. Because you may or may not have fish on your boat. Okay. I buy that. So, so why did he check my safety equipment and my registration and my flares and it went on and on and on? What did that have to do with my fishing rods? I, I couldn't explain that to you. Right, that, and I can't explain it to you. I can't explain why, and this is the biggest point that we're trying to get at here, I think. It's, there's no uh, consistency on a stop. There is none. There is no consistency whatsoever. One guy will just look at your boat and say, okay, go on your way. And then there's there's the whole, they run the whole gamut. Give me your license, give me your registration, let me do an equipment check, let me, let me run your license to see if you have anything against you. Um, and I, I get that too, I get it. But seven times in one week, Seven times out of ten trips. Yeah. Seven times is a week. Yeah. Seven so, times, seven times in ten trips, I think is, is ludicrous. It's crazy. Okay. So I also learned something else this week, getting stopped seven out of ten trips. I explained to one of the officers, at that point, I think it was six out of nine trips. Right. And I, think, I explained to the officers, I've been stopped six out of nine trips. And his response to me was, well, that means we're doing a really good job. That's what I got about three years ago I was fishing back in the river. And the same guy was in December. And the same guy stopped me. I was, I was fishing frequently because there was a pretty good bite back there. It was like four or five nights in a row at Christmas time. And he gave you the same response? And he gave me the same response. Was, it, you know, Do you I, I need to check you every day because you may or may not have a different fish. Now, was he, did he just check for a fish, or did he do the whole check? The whole gamut. Okay. Do you think that he actually believed that he was doing the best job that he could because he was checking you every night? No, it's a numbers game. If, no, if, do he's, you really tied up, if he's tied up with me doing my thing... Now, what do you think? Now, what do you think? In his mind... Oh, in his mind, he's doing a great job. He Okay, so he honestly thinks that he's not being flip. He's not just, you know, um, countering... He, you think that counterproductive. He, no, but you, you think that he really believes that he's doing a good job because he's checking a fisherman six nights in a row or whatever it was. I, I couldn't. I don't know. I don't know if if he's been told to sit at this ramp and check. I check wasn't, people. When the guy told me I, that, I don't. I don't know their philosophy. Well, the, that's, that's I, a, I have the no ph idea. The philosophy is the real root of the situation. But the guy the other night um, that said that to me. I wasn't 100% sure. I was 50-50. I was like, does he actually believe this in his heart, that he's doing a good job? Or is it more of a counter because I'm being more aggressive and asking him, why the heck are you checking me? See, I, I, I wasn't positive. I'm, not, I'm still not positive. I have no freaking clue. 
And that's why I said it's the philosophy that has to change. It is. It is. If, if you think that you see, um, if you see the same guy, if you see the same guy, and, and you checked him Monday, and you see him on Wednesday, his flares are probably still good. Right. His registration's probably still good. Right. His life jackets are probably still good. Well, it, he probably hasn't done a criminal offense in the last three days where you need to run his driver's license and tie the guy up for 20, 30 minutes. And, and that's another thing is, is you tie your time, okay? Uh, time, time, you know, it's, huh? it's, it's crazy. I, to, I, me, to me, something, something somehow, some way has to change. Could change. Well, I, I joined the uh, Captains for Clean Waters this week. Correct. And um, over the years, I've been pretty critical of a lot of the associations and foundations and all these different people that ask you for dough. But um, the Captains for Clean Waters program, even though it doesn't directly, well, it does, but not directly, like it affects like the guides in Everglades National Park. No, it affects everybody. It affects everybody, everybody in one way or the other. But those guys, you know, they're fishing there and then... And, and, in the Captains for Clean Waters, I realized this week is that's really all we got. That's all we got. Well, I've always told everybody, all we got is each other. Right. Captains for Clean Waters is the only organization where I look in that organization, there's like almost every dude, like either I don't know them, like I don't recognize their name, but if I do recognize their name, I'm like, oh, I know that guy. And I got the utmost respect for that guy. Right. There's, there's, there's everybody. Is, everybody in that organization is trying to get behind the good. And I think the new governor has signed a few things into place that. No, no, no. I'm not going into that governor thing. Screw that, DeSantis guy. Blah, blah, blah. The fish died last year. The fish died. That's George Gutz. Uh oh. Here we go with George. Should I answer? The answer. It. Put him on. George. George. What's up, brother? Just so you know, I'm right in the middle of a podcast, but I saw your call, so I answered it. So, oh, all right. so you're getting recorded right now, so don't say anything too crazy. <laughs> the world. Dude, I, so tomorrow's the day that uh, the show comes out on the Sportsman's Channel? Actually, it aired this morning. has another airing tomorrow. It airs uh, Saturday at 1 and then Sunday. So it airs Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Our anchor time, though. Is uh, Saturday at one o'clock in the afternoon. Okay, so that's the that's the one I, I'm going to promote. Is Saturday at one uh, one p.m. Yep, I don't care when they watch as long as they watch it. And I don't care how they watch it. Right, dude. I know I'm not supposed to say anything, but I got the sneak peek. I am totally floored. I've never seen a fishing show quite done like that. That's good. I'm glad. You, I'm glad you like it, brother. I told I told you it was going to be a little different. And- really kind of wanted to highlight what you did and who you were and I, I think the guys did a, a great job at that it has a little to do with me and a lot to do with a good production company well whatever it is um home run dude i am so fired up i think it was a great episode i think your new show is uh right on point and um whether you knew it or not, you just made the uh, Locker Dog Real Guy Show podcast. I've been wanting you to get there on here. Go. I've been wanting you to get on here, but I didn't think it was going to be like this. <laughs> say hi to say hi to Captain Dave McKenzie. He's my guest tonight. Hey, George. Hey, Dave. How are you, buddy? Pretty good. How are you? I'm well. I'm well. Sorry to interrupt you guys. I didn't know you were in the middle of that. I would have waited until later. Dude, we'll call it an extra feature bonus. There you go. <laughs> extra fun. Extra. All right, well... I won't hold you. I appreciate everybody uh, watching, if they will, and you know, give me a call later when you got you guys get wrapped up, all wrapped up. Thanks, George. I appreciate it. Now you can see right, uh, you can see George and I together Saturday morning or Saturday afternoon to 1 p.m. on the Sportsman's Channel. His new show is called Unfathomed, and um, God, I I I cannot believe how well the production came out. Thank you, brother. Right. And we'll have those. We'll, we will have those shows. Uh, on YouTube eventually, we just got to give the network a little time. So, like right now, episode two um, is we just put it up on on the YouTube that aired, you know, maybe a month or so ago. But we'll eventually have on all those onto 
onto the web for people to, to, to see him as well. So we didn't forget about the people that are on the social side of it, the digital side of it. Right on, George. Run that dog. I'll talk to you soon. I'll call you after the podcast. See you guys. Bye. See you, George. Ha! Yeah, if you guys... Oh, oh spilled my man. Water. Well, I know a guy can fix that. At least it was water instead yeah. of my brewski. The, um, so that was George God's... Um, his new show is called Unfathomed. Um, he came down here... He came down... He, you guys probably think that was a plant. Like, you know, it was going to... No, be this is real stuff. That dude. was real. That was real live. We're sitting here drinking beer just talking like we normally talk. <laughs> so anyway, um, he did a show... I've never seen a fishing show quite produced like this. He told me that it was going to be like that, and um, it was hard for me to picture because I've been watching the same type of fishing shows my whole life. And um, geez, I just thought it it's was a different. If it, it's it's a different angle than all the other fishing shows that are out there right now, and it, it's done really well. Well, it, I, I, I did. I was floored when it's, I saw it's it. It's done really well, and, and congrats to George and. Hopefully this is very successful for him. He's a guy that deserves it. Yeah, well, he's a good dude. He's a real guy. Yeah. The um, the Florida Sportsman um, show that I did when it was off the chain. Then the Snook videos that we did on my YouTube channel were totally off the chain. But the episode that you just put out for Unfathomed is totally different. Yeah, it's a it's a different it's a different angle on the fishing, which um, you see now, George. I spoke with him about the FWC before, and in his neck of the woods up there in Stewart, he was bragging about... Um, it's different. Well, he was bragging about that, you know, the guys up there actually work with them, and right, they communicate. It's, different. it's a different and, vibe. It's a different angle, and it's it's that needs to be in Dade and Broward County. Right. You know, and in Monroe County, because Monroe County, they're just as bad, too. Well, there was... Um, it was brought up to me that the FWC was called out to um, to enforce the rules for a lot of the illegal captaining that's going on and right. illegal they, boat rentals been, that are going they've on. Been, they have an initiative for especially the area that you fish, which is all over, to try to stop the illegal charters that's going on in that area. Right. Which is pretty crazy. Right. And I can see it, you know. No, I understand. I can see it going on in, in Fort Lauderdale. And I can see how this is an issue and i can i, I get it i no, get I, I, I get how it has to be addressed right it's a major concern well you can't put 20 people on a boat and be safe right it, it just doesn't work right okay that being said what the hell does fishing rods <laughs> what the hell does fishing rods have to do with law enforcement if that's what we're trying to eliminate is illegal Captains, illegal businesses, illegal people that are unsafe and are not doing the right thing for the environment and for the wildlife. What the hell does people having fishing rods have to do with any of that? I, I couldn't answer that. Um, well, that's what's going on here we, in Broward need, County. I can't answer it either. We need, we need to have um, a better communication with the FWC. We need to have... We need to have some sort of relationship. Exactly. We need we need to have a, a sit down powwow and explain to him. I mean, it might not be that they they have understanding of what's going on. They might not know. Then there's a pretty good chance they don't know. Or maybe they might not know. How would you know what's going on if you don't reach out to people and ask? Correct. Like, if I want to know what's going on with the rules and the regulations, I want to reach out to an FWC officer. Fortunately for me, one of my best friends is one. Is an FWC yes, one officer. One of our mutual friends is one. And one of my fishing buddies. Right. Right. So I have somebody to call. Right. And whether or not he can do anything, you know, that's another thing. But at least for me to get my information, I call Drew. Right. But I knew Drew years before he became right. an FWC we, officer. But, but, so I'm fortunate. But, but your average fisherman, your average captain. They, they, they need to go online. If you go who, online. Who needs to go online? Everybody needs to go online. FWC and fishermen. The fishermen need to go online and the FWC officers because things change so frequently. Well, that the, even the guys, the FWC guys, don't know the rules and regulations because they change so fast, so frequently. Right that it's almost like a weekly thing. Like, what changed this week? What, what do we have to deal with this week? See, this is, um, 
you know. I, I and through social media, you know, in the West Coast, they're going to close fishing, I think. I don't know if it's real or not. But it's going to be a no-take for this whole big, giant area. Well, I mean, I'm, but I'm close. I'm, I'm fine with that. I don't kill fish. You don't kill fish. If they can prove scientifically that that will help the situation, then we should do it in a lot of different places. Yeah, but that's, but that's, that's, that goes beyond what the FWC is, is right. doing right now. Right. So, so getting back to for Captains for Clean Waters. Right. Okay. So I joined that organization. Spent your money. Ah, dude, that's all I can really do for them. Because what they're trying to do is a big, giant project. Yes. That's like running a marathon. They're, they're, they're in the race. Right. And there's I think a, Benny, Bon Benny Blanco's spearheading the race. He's think, spearheading the race for the sportsmen. I think Benny, I think Benny is the, the guy in Tallahassee. He's got the ear. Um, congrats, no. congrats to Benny because he sees the park. Getting, no. getting the way it is. Then he's just, and I think he's a spokesman, and it, he's also with Florida Sportsman doing the show called Watermen that is phenomenal, and it's about the Florida wildlife and conservation. Not the agency, but the actual Florida wildlife and conservation. But, um, and you know, they're trying to fix the water flow and the water issues, the water quality that we have in Lake Okeechobee, and it's this big deal. And there's a lot of, you know, thank you. The, um, there's a lot of uh, just let everybody know litigation. Jeff doesn't have a Yeti; he has an angle bag. Just let everybody know. That was a gift. <laughs> the, um, I'm big on Yeti right now because Yeti sponsors George's show, and George's is like the best show I've ever seen right now. Anyway, the um, but anyway, Captains for Clean Waters. They got this huge project that they're doing. They're well, trying, what I can see about this, they're trying to they're trying to uh, clean up the water quality and all that. And um, it's a big feat. I mean, there's a lot to, that goes on with that. It's going to take a long time. But I have, um, I have a different view, not from captains from clean waters, but I have a different view in something that's way more simple that I think we could accomplish with the help of the FWC. I think we could accomplish in a month. And the only thing I'd like to, to um, try to accomplish is like, just like on Facebook where we have groups where we talk to one another that we have a common problem or cause or whatever, like the water taxi problem or whatever. Correct. And the way social media works and the way your phone works and everything, there is not one reason in the world that the FWC, if their main goal is to save the environment and to conserve wildlife, and the safety of boaters. Uh, priorities, okay? <laughs> if that's their priorities, there is no reason in the world why I don't know an FWC officer to call when I see the guy poaching snook. When the FWC officer doesn't know what's in a guy's live well, he can't call me. We need to and have, it's like totally nuts that to they don't take advantage of these the day, modern, the modern day technology. It's easy. Right. It's so simple. But there needs to be a, a, a Dade contact, a Broward contact, not a Tallahassee contact. You need to have a number. Now the guy that actually knows the, who's the out area there every super, day? The area supervisor for the area. Right. Hey, you know, this, this craziness is going on right now. Or, hey, last night I saw this. You might want to check into this. You know, see something, say something. Right. You know? Right now, I'm taking a stance. Not for the whole state, but for Broward and Dade County. And not for every single officer out there. There are some guys that actually are into wildlife and all that. But it's pretty much fake. <laughs> no, what I mean by that, <laughs> no, I'm telling you, this is what I mean by that. This is what I mean by that. When, when FWC pulls up, okay, it says FWC, Florida Wildlife and Conservation. Then right underneath that, it says law enforcement. Correct. They are law enforcement officers okay. at the end of the day. Right. So let's just erase the FWC part. Correct. And then just say they're law enforcement. All right. Because if you do that, then it's not fake. If you put FWC in front of it, and then the first thing you ask for is a registration or safety equipment, or the first person you're going to go after... Uh, you know, is 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 you know looking for some sort of paperwork violation. 
Well, then it's fake. It's not Florida Wildlife and Conservation. It's just law enforcement. To me, they shouldn't really be doing the safety checks. Back in the 70s and 80s, it wasn't FWC doing safety checks. It was the Coast Guard doing the checks. Right, and the FWC does not recognize a Coast Guard safety check. So if you get checked by the Coast Guard today, right, and the Coast Guard gives you a sticker, to, and you're sporting your sticker tomorrow, and the, F, and the FWC officer pulls you over, and he starts doing the whole thing, and you tell him, the Coast Guard just checked me yesterday? It means nothing. It means nothing to him. Yeah. And so is the FWC real or is it fake? What, what you'll get from the officer was that was yesterday and today is today. So is the FWC real or fake, Dave? I don't know with that. You're no, 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 no. That's a, that's, a, that's a political you're question. Seeing, you're seeing fake. Now, the, you know, they're real, they, they are a real enforcement agency. Yes, law that, enforcement that needs agency. To be, that needs to be tweaked. What are you, some sort of politician or something? I'm not a politician. Well, I'm you just, already told me, you already told me that they've never checked you for fish. I don't have any hatches on my boat. I had one guy jump on my boat and say, open your hatches, and I laughed. Yeah, I laughed because I don't have any hatches. Okay, so... I said, open the hatches, and he looked at me. I said, I don't have any. That's all horse malarkey. The fact of the matter is you've never been checked for fish. Never been checked on the fish on the water. How many times have you been checked for other stuff? Every time they board me. All right, so you don't have to say it. You don't have to say it, Dave. <laughs> and this is, this is my point exactly. See, when we see the FWC officer at the CCA meeting, we don't say what's really on our mind. You give him a half a smile, you give him the fake handshake, you freaking hope the shit that he never sees you out there on the water stay again. Stay right, stay away from stay him. Stay away from him, right? <laughs> stay and away. You, and you appease him. Right. Right. Exactly. Instead right. of driving up to the guy and saying, hey, how you doing? Right. Instead of driving up to the guy and saying, hey, how's your day going? Right. Not, that's not the mentality. Let's stay right away from that guy and hopefully he'll get the next guy, not me. Uh, and that's the mentality that should change. I hope FWC officers listen to this podcast. I hope they will. And I hope to God none of them are offended by it. Well, we're not trying to offend anybody. We're trying to let them know how a captain is, is getting, not harassed, but getting checked so frequently, it is almost harassment. According to my attorney, it's harassment. You know, he gets checked frequently. I understand how... Every day, they can check you for fish. Okay. But are they checking you for fish? No. Let I me. can see every day them sitting at a boat ramp, okay, and looking in your coolers every single day and saying, did you catch fish today and what do you have? I get that. Well, let me tell you something else that I learned this week, Dave. So, you know, obviously I'm pretty active on social media. <laughs> you say? Yeah. <laughs> And I wanted to do this podcast last week, but I was so furious about what was going on between... Jeff, Jeff called me at 11.45 at night one night. He was bent. <laughs> I call Dave often, but usually our conversation is, hey, Dave, how does the weather look? You know, I'm picking up some people down in, uh, you know, government cut. I and always know exactly where Jeff is fishing in all of his spots. Right. And he and he tells me how do I look and I just say okay, go left 20 feet or go right 20 feet off the radars. Dave makes sure that my clients don't get crushed by bad weather on a consistent basis and I appreciate him for that and you know, he's a real guy and I can depend on him. But the um the FWC matter that that we're trying to address out of this podcast is is something that like you said, it's oh, attainable. It's me, attainable. This me, isn't but, a far reach thing. But I lost my train of thought. Let me tell you what I learned this week. So because I do a lot of social media or whatever, I put my stuff on Facebook. One of the posts that I made this week, that I, I took all the FWC posts down. But one of the posts that I made this week was, no matter how hard you try, no matter how hard you try to stay legal, that the FWC ultimately will treat you like a scumbag. And what I meant by that was, I get, let's just make numbers simple. Out of the last 10 trips, the seven times that um, I was checked, the checks went from being super easy to getting a criminal charge. 
And that's what I meant. Like, if you get checked enough and the inconsistencies of the check, then eventually you're going to get caught for something. And that's what I meant. Ultimately, get treated like a scumbag. But I offended one of my best friends because he was FWC and I put it on Facebook. And I did not mean to do that. You know what I mean? Like you're, that was you were you're a little frazzled. Right. And that was not that was not I think I'd turn off my phone on my own podcast. You, you were a little frazzled. No, it was really frazzled. That and, was that and, was emotional. And and a little 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 disturbed on the frequency of harassment. Right, and but what I learned was that when I made that post, not only did I offend the FWC, maybe if they saw it, I offended my buddy, who was FWC. Right. And, and that was never the intention. Right. I right. Never. I only want to be as positive as I can be, as long as everybody else wants to be positive. Well, and I didn't mean to offend anybody, especially my best buddy, my fishing buddy. And I didn't realize that, Dave. So I learned a lot of things this week, and I also learned that maybe I'm not the best spokesman for this kind of thing. Well, when you called me and said you wanted to do this, obviously um, I was a little hesitant, but I want to be positive. I want this to be a positive thing. I want a positive outcome to come out of this. Well, They have a job to do. Right, and I wanted an expert, you know, right. somebody that actually, you know, understands rules and regulations to a T. To come in here and talk with us, like you know, I made him another. Right. I didn't want another, just another fishing but, guy mean, who's pissed off like me. No, it's it's you know, go on the websites, check all the regs that you can. There's a different regulation for a canoe than there is a 26 foot power boat. Okay, there's different regulations for inboard vessels than there is outboard vessels. There's different regulations for flares for inshore boats than offshore boats. Right. So, in a podcast, I can't sit down and say, you need to do this and do that. What I can tell everybody is, before, and I do this every trip, before you put your boat in the water, it is almost like an airplane where you do a pre-flight. Absolutely. Check your lights, check your jackets, count your heads, make sure you have heads, make sure you have jackets, make sure you have a throw cushion, Make sure you have a whistle or a sounding device. Absolutely. Make sure you have all your paperwork. And what I do is I have all my paperwork and my sounding device in a watertight box. So when I do get stopped, which I know I am, when I do get stopped, I just hand the guy the watertight box. Right. That has all of my paperwork in there. And then I have my ditch bag that has all my life jackets, my flares, my fire extinguisher in that ditch bag. So I just point at that and say there. So I'm trying to make it as easy as possible for the guy. And, and I think I think most, well, I know most guys in my position have everything in order Correct. and ready to show. Like, for instance, when the FWC pulls up, I already have my throwable out. I already have my hatches open. I already have my life jackets within, what do you call it? Arms Vis length. Visible. Vis visible. They are visible. Right. I have my PDF within arm's length. Correct. In a separate hatch for itself. I have my lights at the correct heights. I have my numbers at the correct spacings. Right. I have. Are you seeing how freaking ridiculous this is getting? Well, it, it's... It but is ridiculous. It's but freaking ridiculous, especially when we're talking about wildlife and conservation. <laughs> Dave, I can't thank you enough for coming in and being a part of the Real Guy podcast. It's been an honor to be here. It's been fun. I hope what we're talking about was uh, constructive. It's got to be constructive and, a, and positive. It's got to be and a, a learning change. And a learning experience for a lot of people. And um, Yeah, a lot of guys don't understand how many times that a guy who's on the water for 220 days, 240 days a year, actually gets checked by these guys. No, they have no clue. It's, it, you know, and, you, and you shouldn't expect them to know. But, um, I mean, this isn't going to be the last time. This isn't going to be the last time that we're going to have this issue. Or we're going to have you in here to talk about issues like this. As a matter of fact, I think we're going to make you the go to regulation and um, 
Well, if anybody has any questions, they know how to reach out to you. How do they? No, not. Under, I want them to reach out to you since you're the expert. How do they get a hold of you, and how do they oh, find I'm you? I'm undercover now. I'm not even a, not even an media. email for these I people. I am non social media now. I am just undercover. If you have a real question, email Dave at. I'm David McKenzie at Outlook.com. David McKenzie at Outlook.com. If you got a if you got a question or if something that you're not sure about and you don't have an officer to call or to email. You can email Dave, or you can look at the FWC site or the Florida statues and try to make sense out of all that. But I have a $500 an hour attorney doing that because <laughs> I tried and I couldn't make sense out of it. And I want to make sure that I'm legal and that I'm on the right page. Yeah, it, it's, it's... But I try not to... I. This is very, like, abnormal for the Lunker Dog or any of the Lunker Dog productions or the Better Duck Studios productions. We've always been here... To entertain you, to make you laugh, maybe get a chuckle out of you. <laughs> but I thought this was important. I brought in an expert for everybody to uh, listen to. And I honestly believe, unlike the huge challenge that Captains for Clean Waters has with the Okeechobee and the Everglades National Park and our water system, I think this is a small challenge. I think this is fixable. I think this is something that we can do in a very short amount of time. And if this governor is so great, like everybody thinks he is, and everybody's endorsing him because of the Okeechobee and the ways, maybe, just maybe, we can get the message across where for once, real guys in Florida wildlife and conservation can work together, making everything better. Sounds like a fairy tale to me, but hey, we'll give it a shot. Let's, let's go at it. Dave, thanks for coming in tonight, and thanks for being on The Real Guy Podcast. Thanks, Jeff.